Welcome back YouTube, we have Ahmed again from In-Depth Tech Reviews and in this video I'm gonna show you 20 pro tips that I recommend doing once you get your new iPhone to enhance your experience. And the most of them apply to any iPhone model but there are some of them that are specific to the new iPhone 11, 11 Pro or 11 Pro Max. So let's check out what we can do but before getting started let's make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon to get notified every time I post a new video. So let's jump in. The first thing you need to do is to protect your phone from drops. I have here the iPhone 11 Pro Max which is the heaviest phone I have ever used. It weights 226 grams which is heavier than the Note 10 Plus that only weights 196 grams. Or even the iPhone XS Max that weights 208 grams. And because of that every time I take this phone off the table it slips from my hand because it's heavy and there is no grip on the sides due to this smooth metal frame. So I recommend using a case especially with the iPhone 11 Pro Max but don't use any case. As I mentioned it's heavy so using a heavy case will add extra weight to it which will put too much pressure on your pinky fingers. And you will feel the pain after using the phone for 30 minutes or maybe less. Also paying $39 for a case in the Apple store might not be the best option for you. So I bought this affordable case from a company called Celaris. It costs only $15 on Amazon. It's very light, the back of it is made from hard plastic and the sides are made from rubber to easily put it on and take it off. And it gives you a very good amount of protection with these shock absorbers at the corners. It also looks really good in my opinion, so if you want to purchase one for yourself, please use my Amazon affiliate link below. One of the challenges you face when you migrate from iOS to Android or the other way around is migrating your WhatsApp chats. So I created a whole video about the topic showing you how to migrate your chats using a tool called iTransfer for WhatsApp. Keep in mind it's not free, it costs between $29 to $69, but I have 5 free licenses that I decided to give away, so check the link showing now on the screen to know more and participate in the contest. If your iPhone supports Face ID like this one, when you get a notification and look at your phone, it will automatically reveal your notifications content on the lock screen and that might be a privacy issue for you. So to get rid of this behavior for all apps, just go to settings, notifications, show previews and then set it to never. Or if you want to do this for a specific app, just tap on the app name and set show previews to never as well. Next is to activate offline finding. This is a very helpful feature that Apple implemented in iOS 13 that will allow you to locate your iPhone even if it's not connected to the internet by using the location of other Apple devices located nearby your iPhone. However, to activate that feature, your Apple ID has to use two-factor authentication, which is simply requires adding your phone number to the Apple ID. To activate offline finding, go to settings, tap on your account, tap on find my then tap find my iPhone and turn on the switch beside enable offline finding. And if your Apple ID is not two-factor authentication, just follow the on-screen instructions to upgrade your security. Next, activate guided access. This feature will allow you to lock the phone on a certain app and to get out of it, you need to unlock the device with the passcode or face ID. You can also disable certain functions like side button, volume buttons, rotation, keyboard and touch in addition to the ability to set a certain time for using the app which is very helpful in situations where you hand over the phone to your kids or someone that you don't trust that much. To activate guided access go to settings, accessibility, guided access and turn on the switch. You can also set it to use your face ID instead of the passcode activate play sound or speak which will let you know when the time limit is about to be reached Activate the accessibility shortcut which will allow you to triple click the side button to activate or deactivate and finally set a custom screen lock time. Next, turn off autoplay video previews. If you have this feature on, when you open your photos app, the videos will automatically show a preview in the gallery, which might be a privacy concern for you. So if you want to switch it off, just go to settings, accessibility, motion, and turn off autoplay video previews. You can also do the same for iMessage effects. Next, some tips to help you maximize your battery life. 
The first thing you need to do to maximize your battery life is to activate the dark theme, which will save you a lot of power, especially if your iPhone is using an OLED panel, which is the case with the iPhone X, XS, XS Max, 11 Pro, and 11 Pro Max. To turn on dark theme, just go to settings, display and the brightness, then choose dark. You can also set a schedule for the dark theme by turning on the automatic switch, then tap options and choose either from sunset to sunrise or create your own schedule. You can also go to settings, wallpaper and activate the option called dark appearance dims wallpaper which will dim any custom wallpaper you are using on your phone, but the pre-installed wallpapers automatically dim when you change to dark theme. So you won't need that option if you are using the pre-installed wallpapers. Next, switch off background app refresh. And the reason you need to turn it off is to save your battery life, as this will not allow apps to download their new content while they are in the background, and this will not impact your notifications, they will work normally. To turn it off, just go to Settings, General, Background, App Refresh, and you can turn it off entirely, use it only on Wi-Fi, or on cellular and Wi-Fi. Or you can turn it off for certain apps and leave it on for the others. Next, turn off Race to Wake, and that will save you some battery life because if you have it activated, every time you hold your phone, the display will turn on. And you might also unlock your phone unintentionally. But when you have it off, the screen will only turn on if you tap on it. To deactivate it, just to go to Settings, Display and the Brightness, then turn off Raise to Wake. Next, turn off Wi-Fi Assist. This feature automatically uses your cellular data even if you are connected to Wi-Fi, only when your Wi-Fi connection is poor. So you might end up consuming your data bundle without knowing. So it's better to be in control and choose yourself if it's relevant to use your data bundle or just wait for a better Wi-Fi connection. To deactivate Wi-Fi Assist, just go to Settings, Cellular, and then scroll down till the end and turn off Wi-Fi Assist. Next, turn on Low Data Mode. And that can be found under Settings, Cellular, cellular data options which will help you save some data as it will force apps not to use excessive data. Next, allow the volume rockers to adjust your ringer volume and the media volume at the same time. As you see, it gives a volume control for the ringer and when you play any video or music, it will switch to media volume control automatically. And that can be done under settings, sounds and haptics, look for ringer and alerts, then activate change with buttons. Once you do that, you will be able to control your media and your ringer volume at the same time. Next is the ability to edit your share sheet. To achieve this, just to try to share anything, then scroll down until you see edit actions. Tap on it and here you can choose your favorite choices by tapping the plus sign beside each one. And you can also reorder them by using this handle or tap the minus sign to remove any of them. And once you are happy with the modifications, tap done, and next time you will see your favorite options at the top. Next, you can change the display and font size to suit your need. Just go to settings, display and the brightness, text size, and choose the size you need. And as you see, it reflects immediately. Also under display and the brightness, you can change the iPhone view from standard to zoomed, which will make your icons and everything else bigger, but you will need to restart your phone to activate it. Next, you can create your own vibration pattern by going to settings, sounds and haptics, ringtone, vibration, and then create new vibration. Then it will give you this large area and when you keep tapping on it, it records the pattern and once you are satisfied, tap on a stop, then save and it will give you the option to give it a name. Once you give it a name and save it, you will be able to see it as one of the options under your vibration settings and you can also do the same for other sounds. Next, the ability to purchase Apple Care Plus from your settings. 
If your iPhone is within the first 60 days, you can purchase AC Plus from settings without calling the customer service and it's a pretty straightforward. Next, the keyboard. There is a handy feature called text replacement that will allow you to create shortcuts for certain phrases that you use most frequently. And every time you type the shortcut, the phrase will appear as a suggestion on the keyboard, which you can use instead of typing the full sentence, which is handy and saves time. To add shortcuts, go to settings, general, keyboard, text replacement, then tap the plus sign and create your own. And definitely turn off autocorrect. And if you are a long-term iPhone user, you will know what I mean. You can instead activate things like predictive to suggest the next words for you or a slight typing for faster one-handed typing. Next is to customize your control center and add some helpful tools for easy access. And you can do this by going to settings, then control center, then customize controls. And you have here plenty of options to choose from. You can tap the plus sign beside each one to add it and the minus sign to remove it. And again, you can reorder them by using the handle. So that will make things easier for you. So that's pretty much it for today. Of course, there are a lot of features to talk about on iOS 13, but I chose the most important ones based on my experience. So I hope you like my video and if you do, please hit the thumbs up and subscribe for more videos. Thank you for watching.